Welcome back, everyone, to episode 25. I am your host, Chris, my co-host, David. And to AJ Green, Mark Cuban, Wesley Snipes, Tim Couch, and most importantly, Harry Potter. Now let's swish and flick. You gotta, you gotta say happy birthday. I already opened my beer. That's your, that's your part. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Bleep. And to AJ Green, Mark Cuban, Wesley Snipes, Tim Couch, and most importantly, Harry Potter. Happy birthday! Happy birthday. Now let's swish and flick. I couldn't do it. The fridge keeps them pretty cold. That's hot warm. <laughs> Fuck. That wasn't very smooth. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. Mm. I got a question for you. Okay. I hopefully have an answer for you. I want you to tell me what all of these people have in common. Okay. It's a big list. You ready? Yes. All right. We got Trent Dilfer, Joe Flacco, RG3, Jamal Lewis, Willis McGahee, Brashad Perryman, Dante Stallworth, Tyrod Taylor, Vinny Testaverde, Odell Beckham, Jadavion Clowney, Zadarius Smith, Matt Stover. They were all Baltimore Ravens. Good job. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's not that's not that's not the answer. They all played for both the Ravens and the Browns. Oh. Wow. Fun fact. You think Damn. that's a wow? There's eighty one total players that have played for both. It's so weird. The AFC North is very like intertwined with players that have played. They're like, yeah, they're like their own league. On, like, hey, you want this guy? Yeah, yeah. Like I mean, it's still going on. They're the only teams in the league. It's very bizarre. Like it happens a lot. Yeah, it might happen in other divisions too, but I just notice it more because I'm a Ravens fan, I guess. But it's a I lot. Notice it a little a bit in ours, but. Not as much. I don't even know what I saw that made me think of that. But I was like, Jesus Christ. I don't know if that 81 number is like typical across divisions, but I thought that was that was funny. Yeah, it's good and bad. I mean, hmm, bad as in if you lose a player to a rival team, like a good player, then it's like, well, that fucking sucks. Um, or yeah. vice versa, you get one of their good players on your team and you're like, hell yeah. Yeah, I feel like with this list, though, it's uh, you didn't really have a lot to worry about. Like Odell, they didn't have to worry about him going to you. Granted, there was some stuff in between. Uh, mm -hmm. Jamal you, Lewis you also was like don't think of Odell as a Brown. Cleveland. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, Flacco, you know, did what he did, but like RG3, I don't. How many no. games did he play there? Or in Baltimore, he came in in fourth quarters or. You know, did yeah. a lot of preseason stuff, but right. Hmm. Well, I thought that was funny. Yeah, that's um a big, big number. I wouldn't have if you said what else do they have in common. I would have said I don't know. They're all old and retired. Like I figured that's why I just went ahead and gave it to you. I'll take it. I'll take it. All right. Well, with that, we have some more. How these NFL teams got their names. Mm-hmm. Cool. This week, we're here for you. We're going to do the AFC North. Nice. Got my, where is it? There it is back there. The point with my wand. <laughs> Your penned wand? Mm hmm <laughs> There it is. I can take notes and cast spells. It's great. Be like Rita Skeeter. <laughs> I'll be like something. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. All right. So we have how these NFL teams got their names. The AFC North. We'll start Boom. with we'll start with your team. Fairly obvious, Mr. Egg Allen Poe, uh, Baltimore native or died in Baltimore. One of those. He lived there and died there. I know that much. I don't know if he was born there, but uh, yeah, there you go. I mean, we got the mascots, Edgar Allen and Poe, right? The three Raven birds. You do. Oh, I just thought it was Poe. They have three, um, and they maybe Poe gave birth. Well, 
yeah, I know they alternated them a lot. Like one game you'd see Allen and one game you'd see Poe. And then sometimes you'd only see one for like several months. I don't know how they do it, but they got three of them. Hmm. I know that. Okay. The official answer for how the Ravens got their name is the current team name was inspired by Edgar Allan Poe's famous poem, The Raven, which was authored in Baltimore. So that's there where he lived when he wrote it. And died. Because didn't, didn't, did you go to his house, like on a field trip or ever do anything like that? Like, look, here's Edgar Allan Poe's <laughs> hashtag, house. Hashtag no invite. Mm. <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think I did. Okay. I might have. It's, I don't know. it's kind of one of those things you just stand on the street and you go, yep, that's it. <laughs> that's it, yep. That's it, yep. Mm. All right. Next one is the Steelers. Any guesses? Uh, all the steel manufacturing plants in Pittsburgh it would be my guess. Pretty much. So originally named the Pirates and struggling to find gridiron success, Art Rooney decided to rename the team and ask for fan suggestions. Of the many that he received, he decided to go with the Steelers to honor the city's heritage and the steel mills where a large part of his fan base was employed. Hmm. Yeah. That tracks. Yep. <laughs> that makes that sense. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, we've got the Bengals. Care to guess? Well, I don't think they are a native species to the area. So I'm going to go with what we talked about last week and say they had like a, a special Bengal exhibit at the Cincinnati Zoo. And that's what the, the fans voted on because they love their Bengal exhibit, their tiger exhibit. Okay. So for the Bengals, Paul Brown chose the name to pay homage to the Cincinnati Bengals football teams that played in three previous American football leagues in the 1930s and 40s. The original Bengals got their name from coach and founder Hal Pennington, who, after walking through his mother's kitchen one day, noticed her Floyd Wells and Company stove had used a Bengal Tiger trademark, which quickly grabbed his attention, and the rest is history. They're named after a stovetop, huh? His mother's. Interesting. So what if his mother's stovetop had a, like, penguin on it? be the cincinnati penguins or like the cincinnati platypi or something like what if there was something really weird on there <laughs> platypi is that is that it platypi it's not like platypuses platypuses I, I don't know platypi sounded sounded correct platypi. i think <laughs> I that sounds know. like a platter of pies <laughs> just like a smorgasbord Ooh. of fucking yeah Ooh. that's kind of like cheesecake factories like uh like you know, competition is the the platter pie company. Mm. Plot. Mm. Did you? You know, it sounded good in my reach. head. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Got to think before I talk here. <laughs> no, it's all right. So another thing I saw was uh, since Paul Brown was basically like shunned from the Browns, uh, it said he he chose the colors he did for the Bengals. Basically, like fuck you guys. Like, it was close to the Browns' colors, so he was like, I'm taking my colors with me. Huh. Okay. So. Interesting. And then lastly, the Browns. I'll give you, I'll give you a clue. It's, it's, or, <laughs> uh, it's not because they play like doo-doo. Oh, that was definitely going to be my answer. I is Well, <laughs> how do we uh, name this team? Well, I took a big shit this morning. It was Brown. Okay. Um, it has to be somebody's name, if I had to guess. Paul Brown, I don't Paul know. Paul Brown, yeah, yep. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Browns, the Browns were founded in 1946, and as a result of a fan contest to choose their moniker, were named after their first head coach, Paul Brown, who was already a popular figure in Ohio, having coached Ohio State to a national collegiate football championship. I mean, I get he's like your like hometown hero and all that, but his last name was Brown. I wouldn't go. That doesn't scream to me like, oh, let's name our franchise that yeah you imagine like what if every team did it would be like the dallas joneses oof yeah what the fuck um, is that who's your yeah. owner uh it was art model so it would be the baltimore models is the store named after him you know what that's a good question he it could be he, he might own that i don't know hmm there's probably some way worse names out there, though, for some of these teams. <laughs> the Joneses isn't too bad. The Joneses, yeah. Although your logo might be somebody like Jones in, so, you know, maybe. It could just be Sam Jones. 
a picture of him sitting on the floor in the elevator, just like uh, <laughs> with a shoe in his hand. <laughs> I could just hear the hear the announcers now. Anytime we're up by like twenty, it'd be like they're trying to keep up with the Joneses. Mm-hmm. Isn't that a thing? Like a show or a keeping up with the Joneses? That does sound accurate. Yes, yes. I don't know. Well, speaking of doo doo, uh, we're going to do an all time AFC <laughs> North draft, which, based on my notes here, doesn't look like it's going to be very exciting. No, it's not. I think I get to go first this time. You do. And I'm just. It's so disappointing, dude. Yeah. For, for think... so much success to come out of a division, it's literally shit. It's not great. It's not great. Not at all. I think I could take me and, and you at a couple positions and mm-hmm. be a little bit better than what we're um, with here. Yeah, it's so, going to be something. Yeah. So I went first last time, which, by the way, uh, we got a lot of a lot of bullshit comments on that. Oh, people and, saying that Peyton didn't count? Yeah. Yeah, things like that. And like, fuck, oh, you should have chose Jerry Rice. I'm Jerry like, Rice. Caught like, dude caught like 13 catches for like four yards. I mean... I technically like, could have drafted him as a Bronco too. He signed with them. He yeah. didn't play, but he signed with them. Like what the fuck? Yeah, but I could have gone Randy Moss with the Raiders if that's the, you know, line was, of thinking it was just we're going. Fun, like out, out of all the across every platform, all the, all the hate shit we got, we didn't we didn't get one comment that gave us a winner. Yeah, yeah. I think so, yours won, but I thought that was probably the closest one we've done. So I was excited to, you know, get some some feedback on it. But, well, this one's going to be a uh, basement battle for sure. So. Yeah, this one. I don't. I don't even want to do this. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know where I'm going to start because this team yeah, um, is ain't nothing did, else. I know where you didn't you're going. have a lot going for it. <laughs> I know where uh, you're going. So, with my number one pick in the all time AFC North draft is going to be at running back Jim Brown. Yeah, <laughs> had to be. Uh yeah, I think that's it. That's that's pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be some stretches. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. What do you want to move into next? <laughs> mm-hmm. Like I, I didn't even list a receiver or a quarterback from the Browns in my list. Actually, or it, or no, I do have a tight end. I do have a tight end. So there is a quarterback. Yeah, I'm not gonna do it, but there is a quarterback. Old old school quarterback. Yeah. Hmm. But I'm not going to do it. I don't think. We'll do what you got to do. Uh, I, I'm trying to trying to think what's safest here, so I don't have to worry about you. Not that I would have to worry about you. Worry about a picking a brown. Else. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm safe at running back. I know what I want to do next, but we'll see. Depends on who you take. Uh, like I know who and what team I want to do next. I should say. I think I know what you're gonna. do. Mm, what are you gonna do? Mm. I, f- I feel like your your excitement with that is purely based on bias. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and if that's the case, there's only one that's place crazy. you could go with that. That's crazy. And uh, <laughs> I think with my first pick, I'm gonna take Mark Andrews at tight end. Mm, that is not where I was going. Okay. Uh, it's a great pick. He was my number one tight end choice. Um, I'm glad you just didn't take Trent Dilfer from me. That's good. Thought about um, it. No, 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 I was no, thinking either that or Elvis <laughs> Gerback. <laughs> oh, see, yeah, uh huh. Yep. Um, <clears throat> no, so I was going to go with my second pick at wide receiver from Cincinnati. I'm going Chad Johnson, Ocho Cinco. That's what I first thought you were going to do, and then I wasn't really worried about it. Because when it came to tight end and QB, I had a little more leeway. Yeah. So I wanted to get those out of the way for sure. Yeah. Shit. I shouldn't have done what I did. I messed everything up. Mm-hmm. So you have... Um, so Mark was my first pick, right? He was, yeah. I feel like you got to go stealer for receiver. Yeah. I mean, you could go A.J. Brown, but mm, all time. No, it's not. You know who it's going to be. I'm just trying mm-hmm. to figure out. Mr. Smile himself. 
but the only other options there is it, it's well, it's either him or Josh Gordon, honestly, or TJ Husmanzada. What about uh old uh what was his name that came up? Oh, Braylon Edwards. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> All time great. <laughs> Although, didn't didn't Plexico play in Cleveland? Mm-hmm. He sure did. It's mm. not a bad pick, but there's it's better not, names. But he didn't do anything there. Because um, you could still get a good quarterback from that team. Or two, I mean, even. I mean, A.J. Green's not not a bad choice. It's not, but I think Hines is a better choice. Yeah, just do I want to sacrifice the quarterback? Well, my Bengals quarterback, I think, is just fine. If you were to take it's Hines. Not, it's not the... Bengals quarterback I'm worried about is it your running back yeah because if I take Hines then I'm out on both of those Nah, they got a decent running back too I got him right there who Mr. Corey Dillon yeah that's what I'm saying if I if I take Hines I have to go yeah. Corey and then I'm stuck with one guy at quarterback <laughs> True. You see what I'm so, saying? So I do see what you're saying. You could go yeah. Nick Chubb. Yeah, I could. Just saying. It's not a bad pick. Um, if he stops getting hurt, it's not a bad pick. I think I just got to do it. Mm-hmm. Fuck. <laughs> well, are you going to do it? Or? <laughs> I think I'm, I'm going to just, I think I'm just going to fuck this whole thing up. Well, going first is a big advantage in this game. It is. And, and I, I I played defense and went Mark Andrews, and that's not at all what I anticipated doing going into I, this. I was going tight end last for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. I think uh, with my quarterback, I'm going to take Big Ben. Shit. That's what I was going to do. I figured. <laughs> um. Well, you did that old. thing where you like try to you try to make me feel a little better about my like yeah. diminishing options, and you avoid that whole. I know. Yeah. I was like, he'll forget about that. Um, you could go Cordell or Neil O'Donnell, or not. <laughs> There's another guy you can go, but fuck. So, him. at tight end, <clears throat> I am gonna take Heath Miller from the Pittsburgh Steelers at tight end. Okay. For sure. Now. What do I do? Now. So you need a running back, correct? Correct. And a receiver. Correct. Which and do you I have heavy on one and Bengals and Browns? Yeah. Well, your receiver is it, it's a lost cause either way, so just I'd rather go I'd go with yeah. a little bit of a uh, Get on your help, bus help and running back. Yeah, mm-hmm, out of a, uh, mm-hmm. I can't get on the bus at running back. Oh, you sure can't. Well, you might get. I have to get on the. Also, if on you the, go on the chub, if you go the bus, you're wrong. I think. Really, that's who I would have gone if I had to pick a Steeler. Did you already pick a Steeler? Uh yeah, Heath Miller. I definitely would have gone Franco Harris mm. at running back. I just, I I get it. He's like. But I just never saw or experienced him. Like I can just read his stats. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Um. Oh, we another fucking fucking Browns, man. What the fuck? I hate everything about them. They're not good. <laughs> All right, with my running back, I'm going to take Nick Chubb. It's not bad. Yeah, it's not good either. It's not bad. Um, I'm actually in a freaking quandary myself because i'm do i take the current do i take the current or do i take uh, a proven super bowl winner with thirty thousand plus yards in his career are we looking at quarterback Mm -hmm. i'm taking current yeah i think i am too i'm gonna go with my last pick quarterback lamar jackson baltimore ravens yeah wasn't my plan, to be honest. Was not my plan. Um, I did want Big Ben, but gonna go Lamar. I'm not mad. Which at I'm it. not mad at. No, yeah, I'm not yeah. mad at it either. All right. I think with the 
with my wide receiver pick. <laughs> as much as I think Jamar Chase might end up there, I'm going to go with AJ Green. AJ Green. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a tough division to do. Yeah. I that think was, taking Mark Andrews that early was a mistake. Yeah, it was. I just like I said, I was I was playing defense. He scared me a little bit. No, because my I was going Bengals because I wanted to get my Browns and Bengals out of the way because at least Baltimore I know I had more talent. Baltimore and Pittsburgh I had more talent to choose from in the other positions. Right. It was I. So my other tight ends I had were I had Andrews and I had Ozzie Newsom for the Browns. Yeah, I had him and then I had Heath and Tyler Eifert. Yeah, I wasn't if even going to put Tyler's up. name on it on my list. <laughs> I just I, I I took the best I could think of from every team for each position. Well, the, I'm I went Carson Palmer for Bengals. Okay, I had Ken Anderson. Um, and then I also had Terry Bradshaw and Joe Flacco in quarterback. Yeah, I didn't. Fuck and then Jamal job. Jamal Lewis at running back and Heinz Ward at receiver. Yeah. I had Derek Mason for you guys. And I Josh mean, Gordon. he's... Yeah. The only other Raven I could have even thought of would have been Torrey Smith, but... Not, not really worth. No, because he was only there for a year. I mean, I get it. He got us a Super Bowl, but... Mm. Maybe I should have just gone Jacoby to pay him respect. I don't know. Yeah. Respect don't win games. Well, he did win... Yeah, not as a receiver though. Yeah, he don't remember the mile high miracle where he caught a fifty yard touchdown with no time left to take into overtime against Peyton. Okay, I was I was going in the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. I mean, he caught passes in the Super Bowl. Yeah, so did a lot of people. I feel like <laughs> well, he <laughs> said not a receiver. Uh, so you know, I, I was looking at y'all's uh, like top ten receivers of all time, like based on stats i never real heard of like half those guys yeah dude. it's real bad it we rough. got somehow we got lucky this year as long as he doesn't get in trouble with say flowers but that boy's got a mouth on him and a, I, I was gonna say that i thought he already started getting in trouble he did a little bit he did a little bit fucking moron yeah he also lost us a game so you know we're doing big things yep that's what we're here for mm-hmm uh, all right, David, I want you to blindly rank these sports scenarios, meaning you are you are the one in this scenario, and where would you rank these? Okay. Cool? Yep. All right, so first one is going to be you hit a half-court buzzer beater to win the NBA championship. I fucking hate doing these with you because <laughs> the next one could be like... Uh, you shit down your leg in the middle of a basketball yeah, game? Yeah, <laughs> that or like... You ride the bench every game through a seven-game World Series. <laughs> and your team wins, but you didn't do anything yeah. to contribute. Yeah. yeah. Um <laughs> I'll go I'll go two for that, I think. Okay. Um next one, speaking of baseball, is you hit a walk off grand slam to win the World Series. I'll go three. Oof. Um, next one is you hole out for Eagle to win the Masters tournament. Four. Last one is you hit a slap shot from the blue line to win the Stanley Cup. Um, five. All right, and your last one, I think you you did a pretty good job. Um, you catch a hail mary to win the Super Bowl. Yeah, I'll take that at one. Okay. I like. Would you switch any? Uh, as far I would, as I would favor- do baseball, I wouldn't. Seven. It's a seven game series. It's bottom of the ninth. You hit a. You're down by three, and you hit a grand slam. Oh yeah, but you you make it. It's a. I don't like it because it's a series. See that I makes like it that even like, harder though. No, I think you should have could have won in the other games. Like you have one shot in the Super Bowl, and that's it. True. Does that make, does that make sense? Yeah. I feel like. As far as like favoritism, I like the list. Uh, I feel like, as far as a bit notoriety, I feel like you would remember maybe the guy that made the half court shot mm. before you remembered the receiver's name. 
Who who hit the guy? Who hit the shot to win the NCAA tournament for Villanova? I was just gonna say Villanova, but you you <laughs> also saying, said like you also said NBA championship though. No, but I'm just saying I feel like I well, even if you did any of these, if you're a no name and this is the only thing you did, I feel like down the road to be like, who was that guy who did that thing? Well, maybe not the only thing you did. Uh, yeah, if it's the only thing you did, I guess. Right. Right. Yeah. All right, well, I guess we can get away from, since we're dressed up in Harry Potter, anyone listening or watching was like, uh, wait a minute, this is going to be a Harry Potter talk, or, you know, we went well, straight into <laughs> in half sports. an hour of football. Yeah. So did yeah. you want to transition into Harry Potter with sports and Harry Potter? Um, real quick, while we were talking about football, did you get a chance to see... Um, UCLA, UCLA just announced their new head coach, Deshaun Foster. Did, did you not. see his? Did you see his like opening statements? They're like, "Hey, like, like, hey, like, I'm the new coach," kind of thing to the media. Like, you know, one of those. Like, I'm glad to be here. All that good stuff. It was the worst, and I don't even know what it was. I don't even know what I watched. It was like, it was like the dude got told he was their head coach while he was walking on stage. <laughs> Like he he made a statement, and I'm not joking in his in his in his uh, speech that said, "Yeah, um, you know, I'm glad to be here at UCLA." And uh, there was like ten different ten second pauses. And he's like, "You know, it's in LA, and uh, USC is here." Yeah. And, uh, and I'm like, "Did they, nobody tell this guy he's the coach of this team?" <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I'll send it to you. It's yeah, hilarious. send it to me. I'll, I'll I'll put it in here for everybody else that didn't see it. How you guys doing? I'm happy to be here. Glad to be a part of this great conference. Um, finally, putting two great emblems together: UCLA and the Big Ten. Um, we're a school that's won what 123 championships. So. This fits us being right in this conference. Football-wise, we're just excited. You know, um, I'm sure you guys don't know too much about UCLA, but our football program. But we're in LA. Um, it's us and uh, USC. We. Um, I'm just basically excited, really. That's it. It's just, I've never, I don't even, I don't know what, how to explain it except for, uh, wow. Interesting. Just a little tidbit there for you. I guess I can transition to here. Yeah, wizard right. David. So, <laughs> so we'll transition into Harry Potter with uh, some sports themed Harry Potter. Cool. I'm about it. We're gonna build our best Quidditch teams using real life athletes. That's great. So we've got on deck three chasers, a beater, sorry, two beaters, a keeper, and a seeker on our team. Correct. Correct. Okay, because I wrote neater, no. and I was like, is that a new position? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah. So there's not going to be any stipulations as far as choosing same player, anything like that. Yeah. So. And how do you want to go with it? Um, you just name your lineup, and then I name mine, or one for one? Um, I'd say maybe or name your chasers, positions. and I'll name my cha- yeah, name, yeah, yeah, name each of them there and do it like that. Okay. Um, well, then I'll start with my three chasers, which so when I was drafting this team, it was kind of like I kind of took literally like what their position is, um, so to speak. So a chaser in my mind is someone who's like super quick and fast. And I could only think of the three fastest people that I think have ever lived. And I went with chaser number one as Usain Bolt. Chaser number two is Carl Lewis. And chaser number three is Jesse Owens. Okay. 
So I, I took a little bit different approach because chasers, they have to be somewhat physical. They have to be like the, I think like the most athletic on the team all around. Oh, I could argue my guys are the most athletic. Maybe. Well, let me see what you got. Go ahead. All right. So with my, for my three chasers, I went with LeBron James, Bo Jackson, and Serena Williams. Oh, interesting. Okay. Not mad at it. Well, I got two beaters for you. No homo. Um, I was going to say, I don't, I don't know how to take that. No homo. Uh, also took these pretty literally. Um, beater number one is going to be Mike Tyson. Um, okay. And beater number two is going to be Kimbo Slice. Okay. RIP. <laughs> I took a, a, a similar approach. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Not 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 quite as literal, though. Oh, very literal um, on this side. <laughs> my, for my two beaters, I took J.J. Watt and Shaq. Oh, yeah. I would not want to run into Shaq. <laughs> yeah. Swinging a club. <laughs> yeah. Also, was did, did Kimbo ever, like, fight professionally? He did, yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I just remember videos of him like in, like, in the jail yard and just yeah. knocking out. Fucking just drunk white rednecks. Yeah. Uh-huh. So, okay. Let's see your keeper. Um, again, I had to go with um, as literal as possible. And for me, I'm a soccer fan. You're not. So you've probably never heard of the man. But in my mind, the best that I've ever seen at goalkeeper, and that is uh, Mr. Buffon. Does he have a first name? Is that his first name? Uh, it's like, it's works. like, uh, Waluigi or something. What is it? <laughs> Waluigi. <laughs> it's really close to that. Actually. The little um, yellow motherfucker. It is, uh, Gianluigi. Jui, Jui. Oh, let me see how you pronounce it. He's Do Italian. To, if you couldn't guess. Do we need to bring Andy back on to tell you how to pronounce shit? Da, 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 da. How do you pronounce? Here we go. Um, hmm. Hmm? Google's being Google. I'm just going to pull it up and see what this guy says. I thought you were pulling it up the whole time. John Luigi. John Luigi. We took all that time for you to say John Luigi. <laughs> John, John Luigi. It's G I A N. Luigi. Hmm. So he is my uh, keeper, Mr. Buffon. Okay. For mine, I went with Deion Sanders. How bizarre, because at Seeker, starting number 21, I have Deion Sanders. <laughs> also bizarre, because for my Seeker, I went with Usain Bolt. That is really funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, so with my team, I present to you the Harlem Muggle Trotters. So there you go. Hmm. I feel like I need to think of something now. I'll go with, uh, we'll just call him who the fuck is quid bitch. Hmm. Okay. Not like who the fuck is this bitch? Oh, I thought that was a, uh, inside joke to that Harry Potter trivia night. What, what was our team name? What was our team name? Something a little racy, if I remember. Like, not like racial, but like... Yeah, racy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. I don't remember. Something about... Oh, fuck. Like Dumbledore's balls or something? I don't know. No, it was... I don't think it was that literal. (laughs) (laughs) It it was... It was punny metaphorical. Mm. Um, Yeah, I don't remember. I'll have to look that up. Yeah, that was years ago. It was a good one. Yeah. I remember being good. It was but. a good one. We were good ones. All those yeah. fucking nerds there? 
Mm-hmm. We did pretty good. As we I did really good. And- <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think, well, I think we overall went pretty similar routes. I kind of went with Dion at Seeker because, like, I feel like that was his job in the NFL is, like, he was, like, you know, he had to seek out the football and, you know. Yeah, I I get it. I went more so with his job was to defend, and that's what a keeper does. Well, that's why I went with a goalkeeper. Yeah. Yeah. Not mad at it. And then a seeker, I figured you got to be faster than the other guy. And it'd be a very funny, funny match to watch our teams against each other with like Mike Tyson, like, here it comes, I'm going to beat it. And then Shaq's like, oh, no, you're not. I'm going to beat it. (laughs) (laughs) It'd be really funny. (laughs) I'll see if I can find some kind of like AI video (laughs) generator and see if they can make that happen. Although I think one, two, three of three of my guys aren't alive anymore. So no, two, two. No, I just went as literal as possible. I was like, who are the fastest people? Who are the hardest hitting people? Who's good at keeping stuff out? And then who's good at seeking? I was like, it came pretty quick, actually. Yeah. Like, I didn't have to. It's, it's, you're, you're, <laughs> we got who's good at keeping stuff out? Uh, came pretty quick. Yep. <laughs> I'll just yep. let you keep going. See, <laughs> see how many of these you can, you can roll with. I mean, they're pretty literal positions if you think about it. Like, Ah, like like a uh, sixty nine and missionary and uh no, I don't think sixty nine's very literal. Or if it was, it'd be called like double oral. I don't know. What would you call? You some? go yeah sixty eight. That's when you go down on me and I owe you one. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's all I got. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, I'm here all week. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <sighs> and then my team name, I loved it. The Harlem Muggle Trotters. I think it was great. Very clever. Yeah, I got I got patting myself I got on the back right now. It's good. Yeah. Um Yeah. I didn't, um, get, I, didn't I didn't get that memo for the team name, so uh, just, uh, just kind of came to me, had to do it. Right. Um Well, while we're in the wizarding world, um, and as of today, even though the opening ceremony hasn't started yet, the Olympics has started. They already started with some soccer today. Um, okay, no one cares. I watched two matches today. Hmm. U.S. lost 3 nothing to France, and Morocco beat Argentina, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> David goes, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that means absolutely nothing to me. Oh, wow, okay. It sounds like an upset. Yeah, big one, yeah. Um. But in the Wizarding World, if there was their own Olympics, so say like right now, they're also hosting their own World Olympics, but like same same scenario, like spread out throughout a certain country, but they could, you know, put spells or whatever so, you know, muggles can't see stuff, but they could still at least mingle and be about out and about in that same country as the regular Olympics so that they don't have to try and hide it as much. Um, Aside from all the games and that but my question slash list slash what do you think about it is what kind of olympic games would the wizarding world have aside from i think quidditch is a pretty obvious one yeah um i figured dueling you ready potter i think one that comes to mind is like oh no like, scared potter you wish you wish eh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um fuck. i don't know i have a few more too if you want those well the the first thing that came to mind for me is like like potion making oh okay i can see that so kind of like when uh they had to make liquid luck like uh or liquid death um no luck no, that's what he, coffee. That's what he won. Oh yeah, yeah, you're right. But something like that, like who has the most accurate or that kind of thing? Yeah, I think that or like maybe guess like a couple this potion. <laughs> no, no, no. I was I was thinking like that or like like speed, like who would oh, be yeah. the fastest. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay, like some something like the uh, the draft of living death. Like you know, it, it's either going to work or not going to work. 
or like polyjuice potion. So like how quick can you do it? Well, that one wouldn't be how quick because doesn't it take like a month? Yeah, well, I'm I'm just saying like <laughs> like po- potion <laughs> Potions that there's not like a like a quality scale to. It's just a, it either works or it doesn't. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So you have mean, like like the quality ones like Hermione would have lost that shit because she turned into a fucking cat. Yeah, but then there's I, ones like like the Living Death one that either works or it doesn't. Yeah. So I just don't see that as that. like a sport though. That'd be like in the Olympics. I'm having like a bunch of chemical like chemistry professors like, hey, make your quickest batch of methamphetamine go um we went straight to meth huh uh, well <laughs> you know um i'm thinking more along the lines of actually like athletic skill or more hmm. ma- maybe not athletic but closer to say, it if it's than being in a classroom um maybe like uh like so hippogriff like, racing Okay, that kind of falls in line with, like, you could do a lot of stuff with brooms. So you could do, like, broom racing or mythical creature racing. Um, Yeah. Or you could do even, like, the Olympics has, like, equestrian, which is, you know, like, training a horse to do specific tasks. You could do that with a mythical creature. Um, And I think water sports would have a lot of cool stuff because of, like, all all the spells that they can do with, like, water and breathing and just, like... All that stuff. I think there'd be a lot of cool water wizard sports. Yeah, um, like a like a diving kind of challenge. And then you could use whichever, like in the Triwizard Tournament, like any of the methods they used. Like you could dive, maybe how deep you can dive or how whatever. Or like diving th- for certain things. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was thinking like uh, synchro- synchronized would be easy, I guess. You don't have to have... Wizarding so powers to do what? that. Swimming? Swimming or mythical creature movements or like broom dancing with a team of people on brooms. I don't know. Something like that. Um, hmm. Like 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 six people on brooms on one team. Like yeah, coming down it. from like 10,000 like feet and then doing this yeah. and that and this. Kind of like, like uh, think of like fighter jets, like Blue Angel kind of stuff, like formations and stuff like that, but on brooms. Um, and then I thought shooting, like they could do like a wand accuracy kind of thing. Like an archery? Yeah, but with, like, wands. but with wands. So, like, you're just using your generic whatever. I don't know. Whatever yeah. that we used in um, Hogwarts Legacy, that red one. <laughs> yeah. Pew, 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 pew. They also, um, they also, they had a couple games in there, too. It was like, uh, you had to, like, use your wand to, like, push the big boulder, like, a certain, or, like, pull it towards you and have it get, oh, like, as yeah. close to you as mm-hmm. it could without That'd falling That'd be good. So, like, going through yeah. either the maze from, like, Goblet of Fire or just some sort of, yeah, exactly, some sort yeah. of room that's set up to test your skills and knowledge. That'd be good. Like, speed run that. Yeah. Um, like a butterbeer or fire whiskey chugging contest. Nah, see, you don't need wizarding powers to do that, though. There's got to be a spell where you could, like, open your throat. Like, <laughs> like, openest no homoists or something like that. <laughs> Deepest th- throatus. I think that would open something else, David. <laughs> uh, deepest, deepest throatus. I like deepest it. Deepest throatus, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, hmm. Yeah, I like it. Um, like, I just think it'd be a cool concept slash idea i think just if like that was a thing that was like in yeah the books or the movies was like oh the the wizard olympics is going on right now like let's go check i know they had like the quidditch world cup and all that but yeah just to that, incorporate then- more just magical because i think a lot of like the second half of the series just kind of lost that like oh that's something new oh i've never seen that before oh oh my gosh i can't believe the dishes are doing themselves like the first half of the series was like Oh, oh, this is so cool. Yeah. Well, well then, keep in mind, there was a, a dark wizard trying to take over yeah. the entire well, let's wizard. Let's lighten world. it up a little bit with some synchronized brooming. Yeah, mm-hmm. but then we'd get the critics <laughs> that are like, hey, uh, can we stop fucking doing this shit and like take care of the bigger issue here? Hey, where's uh, that guy who's killing everybody at? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know, but did you see that? Did you see that goal? Uh huh. Uh huh. Like, fi- uh, fi- no, fi- I just saw my, my fucking mother in law get blasted by fucking whoever like 
Or they get, get you know, all those Olympic wizard athletes to help fight against the Dark Wizard, use all their powers to go find his Horcruxes and defeat his Dark yeah. Army and and do all this well, that's, nonsense. That's one of my my biggest gripes. And we'll get we'll get into that. But I, I yeah, I agree because that would be like you wouldn't do countries. I guess you would do schools. But I guess, isn't that no? It'd be countries. The, it wouldn't be schools. It'd be countries. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. So schools would be like the NBA, and like their Olympics would be like countries. Like the like the Tri Wizard Tournament would be like the NBA. So yeah, the like Tri Wizard is school the school competition. School. I'm yeah. talking country competition. Okay, because you could be in a country and you're a great wizard, but you don't have a wizarding school in your country. You know what I mean? You could be from, yeah. you know, Zimbabwe, but you're an awesome wizard, but you don't have a school to go to. But you can still compete from your country, right. and you know, yeah. So would England win? I don't think necessarily. Just because the best school is there doesn't mean they're going to win it. But it would also be one of those things that's like. What if you live there, but your native country is somewhere else, which happens a lot in the Olympics where people, even though they're a resident of, like, say, the U.S. or whatever country, they then, for the Olympics, swap and they go back to their home country and where they're from. Right. I'm just – I feel like maybe just because it's all we know, but England seems like where they would all – Start. I don't know. Well, who was the best Quidditch team in the World Cup? <sighs> the Irish were there, right? The Bulgarians. Yeah. Like you don't think of Bulgaria as a big Olympic comp- like country, like right? But that's so that's one sport, though one event. Yeah, if we're going all the events, like who would be the best? I think it would yeah. have to come down to population. Okay. Typically, those are the countries that do the best just because they have the biggest pool to choose from. Like yeah, Usually, it's like the, the U.S., odds. Russia, China. Yeah. Um, those are typically the big three, typically, even though Russia is not allowed to compete this year, so that's great. They got the uh, the Joey Chestnut treatment. They got that sanction, yo. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Poor guys. Mm. Mm. Eh. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But it's funny. So this year in soccer, um, this is the first time the U.S. qualified in, I think they said, 16 years since 08. It's the last time really? men's U.S. soccer was in the Olympics. And then here's the weird part is the past two Olympics, Brazil has won the gold medal and they did not qualify. I, hmm. uh, it's bizarre. Is there any like, like it's probably because this. I didn't, I don't know. It could be they just didn't have the talent or they just had really crappy qualifying matches. I couldn't tell you. Maybe a bunch of people got hurt. I don't know. I don't know. There wasn't, there wasn't another plane crash, was there? Mm, Not to my knowledge. Hmm. How bizarre. How bizarre. bizarre. So yeah, I think that'd be really cool to see a, um, yeah, I think that would be cool. Wizarding Olympics. I think it'd be fun. I have to write JK a letter and say, hey, listen, why don't you make this happen? Yeah, that's just another stink for like, uh, well, uh, how come the girl wizards can't compete in the boy wizards? Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Isn't she like a whatever the fuck she is? No, she's the opposite. What is she? That. She's the opposite of that. Uh, she's like everybody can be everywhere. Yeah, she's big on like she's not into like the whole trans movement and. That's what she got in trouble for was saying, you know, guys are guys and girls are girls. And yeah. So, that, so yeah, what I said is correct then. Like, girls can't compete in this sport. Oh, and... she would get more stink over it. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Yeah. Although in the wizarding world, it seems to be like they really don't care. Like, they're like, oh, you're, you're good enough. Then you'll be on the team. Like, like Quidditch teams had a couple girls on it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Dual- I guess it, uh, it depends on the event. Like dueling, I'd rather duel against like a a Neville compared to like a Hermione. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, that's true. I guess uh, it's less like physical exertion right. kind of thing. I also so. saw so Harry Potter's birthday was today, the thirty first. Correct. 
But yesterday, the 30th, was Neville's. How bizarre. Do, 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 do. <laughs> How bizarre. How bizarre. I thought that was pretty funny. It is funny. I didn't know that. I'll fire you. I go. Hi, everyone. I just wanted to take a second to ask that you all hit those like and subscribe buttons. Or if you're an audio listener, go ahead and give the guys five stars. Thanks for listening. Now back to the Poor Choices show. Well, speaking of uh, the Quidditch World Cup, Mm -hmm. did you know that Harry spent the equivalent of $750 to buy him, Ron, and Hermione omnoculars as a Christmas present to watch the Quidditch World Cup? To be fair, Harry's loaded. He is loaded. So that's kind of probably one of those, well, I can afford it and you're my friends. Look what I got us, guys. Right. But did you know he also gave Fred and George the equivalent of $25,000 of his Triwizard Tournament winnings to start their joke shop? Does he at least have some sort of percentage in the joke shop? Like he's getting some passive income out of this? or I, I doubt it. See, you messed up, Harry. Yeah. Well, Although, again, he me- probably doesn't need it. but No, he doesn't need it. And this even says he gave it to them to start his joke shop because he didn't need it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So... Like when you um, when you see them go into the vault in the first movie, there is so much money in there. <laughs> yes. Like he's definitely a millionaire, right? Like multi millionaire. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 A hundred percent. Okay. And uh, on the opposite spectrum of that, um, in the Chamber of Secrets, when the Weasleys completely emptied their vault, it consisted of one galleon and a pile of sickles. <laughs> Which could be equated to anywhere from fifty to seventy five dollars. That's rough. Also, so couldn't they, couldn't so Harry had just hit Draco? Like he's like, My father bought the team this. Couldn't he just hit him with like, all right, well I'm just gonna go buy this for my team? Could have. Like he has all this money, but he had to get gifted a Nimbus two thousand. Yeah. Like think well, about it. You're his age and you're like, damn, I have all this money. I can buy a freaking sports car hell yeah i'm gonna do that so technically it might not be his until he's 18 oh that's a good point all right well i wanted to see if you could guess how much these things cost in harry potter like in u.s dollars i have wizarding world money but i have the equivalent so if you wanted to try to guess uh it's probably too much but a galleon is approximately 25 bucks yeah i'm just gonna go with uh u.s dollars (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, in that case, um, how much do you think Harry's wand cost? I think they're pretty expensive. I'm going to say like 2K, 2000 Well, Well, you'll be upset to find out that um, they don't cost much more than we paid for our fake ones. Damn, Ollivander making no money. Yeah, so Harry's... <laughs> no wonder Harry's he's been wand. open for so long. <laughs> he can't retire. <laughs> Harry's wand was seven galleons, which is approximately $175. Damn. So how much would, like, the Elder Wand cost? Would I pay for this? Like 80 bucks. Is that from Universal? Yep. No, that was, like, probably 50-ish. I think that's yeah, what I paid. Well, it's got the thing, right? It doesn't do much. I'll tell oh, you. Oh, you bought the one that's interactive. So those are actually cheap. Like, those are actually cheaper than the other ones. Uh, well, I didn't mean than the replicas. <laughs> hmm. What about that TV remote I bought you? Um, how much was it? Is that what you're asking? Do you ever has it ever seen the light of day? Swish, swish, uh, and flick your channels. It did on. The TV that's now in my bedroom, I don't think it works on the one that's now down there. See, I just think it's the coolest thing if, like, nobody knows you have it. And then they're like, hey, can you put on? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, sure. He <laughs> <laughs> put out the pen wand. Hey, can you turn that down? <laughs> yeah, I got gotcha. you. I just, I don't know if, uh, I guess I could pull it out and check. I don't think, I don't well, know I how re- many buttons there are on it. So I don't know if it can, like, switch inputs and, like, well, how we, it would We definitely Netflix struggled. I remember like when that. I got it for you. Like, we yeah. struggled just to do basic stuff with it. Yeah, I do want to buy one of those that like shoots like the paper, like you shove the the paper in it and then it shoots that yeah. little firebolt. Now they're just, expensive. I'm, 
I'm and I'm wondering if they're as effective as like TikTok makes them out to be. They look like, like if they good actually time. like shoot a fireball or if someone's just like really good with video editing. No, no, they definitely do. Okay. Yeah. But I think they're close to a couple hundred bucks too. Probably. All right. So I have the reward for Harry's capture. Mm, which was placed by Voldemort, correct? Correct. Voldemort probably said, I'll give you Harry Potter. The one thing that will lead to my victory. Half a mil. 2.5 mil. Woo! Damn, Voldemort's pockets are deep. Damn. All right, we have the cursed necklace. How much is it worth? That was a pretty that was pretty blingy. I'm gonna say that's five K. It was thirty five K. Whoa. Damn Joe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she bought it. No, it was give to, given to her, that's yeah. correct. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. All right, we have unicorn hair. How much unicorn hair? I guess just a strand. Like we going by the gram here? What are we talking? <laughs> Whenever you go into the store and you say, "Hey, let me get some of that." That's um, that's a hundred k, six figures. I have five hundred and twenty five dollars. What for? Well, I guess all right. We're in the wizarding world, but aren't they still yeah. super rare even in in that world? Uh, I think you're thinking of Thestral hair, which is in the Elder Wand. Yeah. Okay. Well, so not okay. that expensive. Yeah, you could put it on your credit card. Yeah. Yeah. Charge it. Yeah. Charge it. That's what they say, right? <laughs> I don't charge think it means that, it. but charge. I just like how wizards are automatically English. Charge it. Yeah, charge it. Charge it, mate. All right. Uh, <laughs> how much does a ride on the night bus cost? Hmm. 50p. Uh, it's 11 sickles. Oh. Do you know what that equates to? No. <laughs> well, you, you said P. Like, I have any idea what the fuck that is. Like cents. Like 50 cents. Oh. Uh, uh, That's British cents. 50p. $16.50. See, he's making more money than Ollivander. Damn. I don't know. I don't know what the uh, what kind of gas mileage that double-decker gets. Mm. <laughs> You know, <laughs> what you fall over for? <laughs> <laughs> we didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> well, come on, then. One of the most underrated lines in all of the movies. A hundred percent. Fun fact before I hit this last one. Did you uh, know he killed Hedwig? He who? Stan Shunpike. Did he? he oh, did. wait a minute. He was under the Imperius curse, but. Mm. He murdered him. That was a. He said that. Mm -hmm. Serious Black. He's a murderer. He's a murderer. And I go, damn, so is your dentist because some teeth are jank. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this scarf. Yeah, I, I knew you were going to get hot as shit. Yeah. All right. And the last one mm -hmm. is a butter beer. Six fifty. Six dollars fifty cents. Is that what they are at Universal? No, they're probably like 14 there. <laughs> I don't get them, though. Gym. I'm not. A, I don't like butter beer. I'm not a big butterscotch fan. No? Mm -mm. Well, we're getting gypped because uh, they're three bucks. No, I think Two that's sickles. fair. So it's about the same price as a beer, but then we're getting gypped because we're going to a theme park. You know, it's like yeah, a, we're get, a ball we're game or something. Because we're paying four times as much for a knockoff. True. That's like, you know, we, we buy jerseys on eBay because we pay a quarter of the price, not four times the price. True, true. Well... I'd still rather, if I'm paying the price, I'm going uh little known secret for anyone who's ever been to Universal. Um, get yourself a little bit of uh, fire whiskey and strongbow. They'll mix it in a cup for you. Uh, tastes like some apple pie. So good. Just don't ask for any ice and you're good. Yeah, they're not one of them uh, stingy fucks that are like, well, just because you don't get ice doesn't mean nope. you get more... They fill, it, they fill it to the top. It is like 14 bucks, but it's going to make that roller coaster that much better. Guaranteed. Yeah. If you have a couple of them, maybe not for the person behind you, but. True. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. speaking of beer, what are you drinking this week? I have 
per usual, uh, Florida Avenue, Mm -hmm. which is that one right up the street. Mm -hmm. It's called Pit for a Queen. Mm -hmm. Any guesses? Think of the name. Let's see. Does it taste like fish and chips? No. Think Mm. of think of Pit. Mm. Um, Old Spice. Uh, no, you a little too literal. Burnt rubber. You're too fuzzy. Oh, like a fuzzy like, navel? Like, like a peach uh, pear. Like a fuzzy navel? I get it, like a peach pear. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I get yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's a peach cream rice lager. Cream rice? Yeah. It's like a cream peach ale lager. I just said that. It looks pretty light to be a lager. Well, it is. I don't make the rules. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> I don't make the rules. Well, I have a little. Um, uh, oh, do you want? Oh, do you want me oh, to? Oh, 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 oh. So, David, if you had to grade that out of uh, <laughs> out of ten, what would you give that that beer? I think you. I think you rate out of ten, and you grade from A to whatever you grade from. All right, listen. <laughs> Just score the damn beer. <laughs> All right, let's see. I would give it an eight point three five. Oh, so we're into like some like Olympic diving scores right now. Like we got to get. Yeah, it's good. I, mm, I'm not. I'm not like the the biggest peach fan, but mm. it's good. But a little bit of peaches and cream. You know what I mean, peaches mm-hmm. and cream. What's that other? Didn't we already didn't we do that one episode? And I, I said something about that being an outcast, and yeah. Eric was like, "No, motherfucker, yeah. it's this person." And then I said the Mario song, but then I'm now I'm thinking of that other peaches song. You, you're probably the, yeah. Oh, the other one, not yeah. the Mario. Yeah, no. Um, oh, going to the country, get myself some peaches. Going to the country. Come on. <laughs> okay. Um, it's um called peaches by the presidents of the united states of america joe biden that's probably why i don't remember it oh no maybe that's not it yeah that's it going to the country got myself some pizza well my beer (laughs) this week hopefully is um, it something we can sing about I went back to Urban Artifact. I think I've had them a few times. Yeah. Um, it's called Ward, W-A-R-D, Ward. I don't know if that's like a ward of the state or I don't know. Or like an like O Ward or Heinz Ward. Eh? Um, is a vanilla key lime American fruit sour. Van- say all that again? That, that was like diet cherry vanilla Dr. Pepper. <laughs> it's a vanilla key lime American fruit sour. So key lime vanilla okay. sour. Okay. Um I just now saw it's 6.7, so that's nice. A little extra punch in it. Uh, reward the Curious. There you go. It's got this little goofy fucking frog holding like a spoiled banana or something. I don't even know what that is. Hold on, let me. Sure. Okay. Reward the Curious. So that's like the like the opposite of cats. Fuck cats. <laughs> I'll drink to that. <laughs> it is. Woo. Sour factor is a 10. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Um, the after, like once you've swallowed it, I get a really good. That's when that key lime vanilla hits, which is good because it's not like that nasty. Uh, I just drank a beer. Um, I'm going to give it a, if we're going to two decimal places. We go to six. I'm going to give it at eight point. Seven five, eight point seven five. Very tasty, very tasty. And who is that? Uh, Urban Artifact. Okay, who and they, they are, are Florida. No, they're from uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. Hmm. Hanging out with Paul Brown up there. Oh, I was going to say uh, Sam Jones, who at the time of recording, if you haven't yet, uh, you might want to text him Happy Birthday today. Correct. Well, suck a butt. How would I know that today's his birthday? 
Uh, a couple of years ago, we went to Clearwater to celebrate it. Actually, yeah. I think three years ago today, we were stuck in an elevator. Well, that sounds dreadful. Um, also, Sam, apologies, but Cincinnati has no business brewing key lime beer. <laughs> well, this one they do. It's very tasty. Hmm. Well, if it was Florida, it could have been a 975. But at the same time, I guess Florida Avenue has no business brewing peach beer. We're close enough, though, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, there's literally a band named after how close it is. <laughs> I don't know if I'm drunk or retarded. <laughs> I'm too drunk to taste this chicken. <laughs> I, just, I just read the can. It says, brewed and canned by Florida Avenue Brewing Company, Wesley Chapel, Florida. And I was like, hey, that's where I lived. And I was like, oh, shit. I went to the fucking brewery and bought this beer. Duh. <laughs> you also said at the beginning of it, you said, this is that one from right up the street. Yeah, so we'll yeah. go with stupid. It is what it does. What is your won't even try, not even once? Oh, uh, balut. It's like that baby duck that people eat. It's like a delicacy in like Asia. Is that worse than like puffer fish? I don't know. It just looks, it's like a basically fully grown duck, but it didn't actually live or develop but it's got its beak and it's starting to grow feathers and stuff people pop that shit Ugh. What, do you, what do you mean pop that shit like eat it don't stop okay <laughs> uh i ain't doing that okay that was <laughs> give me give me what? a twinkie and some fried chicken <laughs> like i ain't doing that how the fuck did you end up right there uh, i just i would never do that huh. <laughs> it's gross interesting what's yours uh, other than like drugs, uh, I'm trying to think of like something like rant. Like, I don't know how the fuck you even came up with balut. Uh, something mm. I would never do. Yeah. Never do. Probably go wear a Redskins in- jersey. I've done it. Lost a bit. No. Mm. Uh, I would never go into an attic in Japan. Ah, uh, that's a good one. Uh, I've said that for a long time. I just, it's so crazy to me, like watching that movie. Like, if you, A, get a fucking flashlight. Like, you're going into the attic with a lighter. Like, <laughs> it's like 2006, Sarah. Like, come on. <laughs> no, it get wasn't it her. It was, it was the opening scene oh, of it that, was like, the, old lady. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the maid like, or whatever. How are you up there? I don't know if it's like instinctive, but like if I'm going like this and I see something, the second I see anything that's not darkness, I'm going I'm oh, swinging. Oh. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Like how do you, how do you not react long enough to get sucked up into the attic? Like, like she's probably still up there, like a fucking Christmas decoration. Like There's she's plenty never of, coming down. Plenty of those in those scary movies. Like, um, like they make fun of them in all those scary movie movies. Like the ring girl, she like crawls at you like super slow and he's like, what the fuck is this yeah. bitch doing? <laughs> like the second she's crawling at you, unplug the TV. The second her hand comes through the TV, you don't just stand Before there and that, go, oh my God. The, the <laughs> second you see a well and someone crawling out of it, you're like, fuck this, change the channel. When it doesn't Man. change and she keeps coming, you unplug the TV. So that movie came out, we were probably what, six-ish grade, maybe seventh, uh, give or take. Ooh, I was going to say like, was it that early? When did yeah? Because I, was I say like oh two oh three. Well, I I was in at least maybe I was just at dad's for the weekend or something. But I was in Westminster when I saw it, and me my my neighbor my buddy watched it together, and you know freaked us out. We're young teenagers, like oh fuck that shit, that's crazy. And then yeah. we go outside. He lived two houses down, and we were going back to his house. Um, and we one of the houses on the way had a ladder like a big tall ladder going up to the roof and we were like oh shit Fuck no. fucking run run <laughs> and we book it and obviously it's like middle of the day it's like noon like on a tuesday like we're like fucking move man go 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 <laughs> noon on a tuesday <laughs> it was middle of the day like oh that's great did i uh, did i tell you about the time i had uh so it was joe so thomas was at the house and i had joe and Mike over and I think this already, yeah, but keep going. And Mike, you know, Mike is like fucking retardedly scared of like <laughs> yeah. scary movies. Yeah. And so 
I asked him to come over. I was like, hey, you want to come over and watch a movie? So we were all hanging out in my room, and I put on The Grudge. And I had Thomas sit in my closet for like 20 minutes. <laughs> so and Mike didn't five, know he was there? No, Mike had no idea. Like before Mike <laughs> got there, Tom got my closet. And like 20 minutes into the movie, like the first time you hear like the uh, – uh-huh. Thomas like fucking bust out of the closet and dude Mike fucking screamed ran out of my room ran down the hall ran downstairs dude it was the it was the funniest fucking thing I've ever seen uh, was, it was this great whose house was that at at mom's in Selby did she have it downstairs in Selby yeah yeah she still lives there what are you talking about oh I'm thinking of uh Cloverly uh uh, no, we're, uh, we're upstairs. <laughs> He's like, what the fuck? But, yeah, she still lives there. You've been there, Chris. Yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> God, I remember I biked over there one day. That was the worst decision I made. I biked through the back Lock Haven Woods and Selby Woods. Do you remember that? Oh, I used war- to do that. It Not was the to, worst. For other purposes. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. No, it was the worst. I was like, why the fuck? Now I got to go back? Ugh. It wasn't fun. All I ever thought going through those woods was like, this is where I would bury someone if I could. <laughs> There's nothing out there. Like, who the fuck is going back there? Like, oh, let me see what the like, fuck's buried. Every now and then you hear, like, people playing paintball or, like, an ATV or something. But, like, yeah. there's nothing out there. Which is surprising that they haven't developed that, being so close to Annapolis, that that's not just pure neighborhoods. That's, that's got to be owned. Is it the hardest yeah. or some shit probably on yeah. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Guaranteed. All right. So I have here some of the funniest tweets of all time. Cool. This one from at Julie Juliet Maria, July first. All the faggots to the back. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Is that because that's after Gay Pride Month? <laughs> yeah, what, okay. what do you mean? It's that why? Okay. I wasn't sure if she's like on a bus or something or what was going on. <laughs> uh, no, that's the first of March. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We have from. Uh, at Joyce Evans, Fox 29, thought Breaking Bad was hot last Sunday. See who's Breaking Bad in Southwest Philly, leaving six people shot tonight at 10. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> There's no need to put, to put any kind of, I don't even know what you call that, alliteration <laughs> into that title of a headline. Like, I think six dead is enough. <laughs> Jesus. Oh. Uh. This username was blurred out, but it says Helen Ke- Is that Sam? That was Andy. Oh. Had him put a movie Andy? up for me. Yeah. Quit fucking around. <laughs> what? Is he going to find one, out? <laughs> I, <laughs> that was like episode 16. Come on now. <sighs> this one says Helen Keller probably gave the most supreme head on the planet in her day and age. No sight, no sound of distractor, just globbing the knob with touch and taste alone. <laughs> pinball wizard dome. She's a pinball wizard. Da, oh. da, da. Is that a thing? <laughs> Tommy. What about him? Pickles? Tommy the pinball wizard. Okay. What I believe it. Fuck. <laughs> There's a whole... That was a whole ass movie, and a rock song. What was it called? Tommy the Pinball Wizard. <laughs> oh, what? I would I would say tell Andy to put it up, but I don't want to hear another ding. He's a pinball. Wi- it's such a good song. I'll send you that. It's great. Okay. So some of these are like uh, <laughs> they're funny, but they're also like should have been deleted. Okay. Oh, that, well, this one actually says this tweet has been deleted. This, okay. <laughs> it must have been before Elon got a hold of it. It says, can't wait to have a son so he can dick me down when his dad's not acting right. That ain't that ain't right, person. That ain't right. Whoever put that up there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one from at missed years. Imagine if men had to breastfeed babies using their cocks. <sighs> Who? This one also says this tweet has been deleted. Who's thinking of this stuff and then saying, I'm going to put that out in the world. Not only did I think of that, I'm going to, I'm going to let other people know. Yeah. So if you look at the one I sent you, it's a, from at KFC, it's a picture, it's a picture of a piece of fried chicken and it says, 
I hear you. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> I see you, and I stand with you. Hashtag Black History Month. Uh huh. And then the shadow of the fried chicken is the fist. Yeah. Uh huh. So uh, that's probably the epitome of like bad decision, good intention. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Yeah. Mm hmm. Uh, Damn, the next chicken one looks from, good. It does look good. <laughs> <laughs> the next one from at Maul. She says, no, stop one time and you pull your pants back up. You're a faggot. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. This, <laughs> this one's good. This, this one from at Yeah Yuki. Just fucking lost a Clash Royale game because of a stupid ass Amber Alert. I hope that motherfucker stays missing. Damn. <laughs> got to get my Clash on. I never got into Clash. It just wasn't. I never got into Clash, Candy Crush, none of mm. it. To this day, I still play Candy Crush on airplanes. Now, the first game that I got addicted to, can you remember your first like smartphone game you got? like First smartphone game? Yeah. This was a big one. Uh, we even would like just be sitting in a room playing it together. We were at someone's house, and uh, I'm trying to avoid thinking of what you're thinking. Uh -huh. The first thing that comes to mind for me is Temple Run. That's it. That's it. Yeah. Uh huh. Okay. A thousand percent. Yeah. I remember sitting at Metro playing that. Yeah. Yeah. We were there too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so this one is from <laughs> this one's from a, uh, I think an elementary school teacher that obviously got fired. Uh oh. It says, "Going to Africa. Hope I don't get AIDS. Just kidding. I'm white." Damn. You lost your job. Last, <laughs> <laughs> you no work there and, no more. <laughs> the last one equally bad, but uh, maybe twice as hilarious. Okay. Says. Never lie to an Indian bitch. That red dot on their head be recording everything. <laughs> That's the best one. That's really funny. <laughs> <laughs> that one is from at, at Ho Glizzy. <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, that's, yeah. Huh? Here for the good time, not the long time, right? That was the one that made me LOL the most, I think. Lol, that was, yeah. yeah, that was good. That was really funny. If we if we ever do blow up, that should be our slogan, and we should start to get real racy. Here for the good time, not the long time. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. Ho glizzy. Okay. Ho glizzy. <laughs> <laughs> so for this week, I had on Ask Reddit, Mister David, um, if you had an income of one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year and didn't have to work, what would you do with all the spare time? 150k a year correct i'd probably continue to work elaborate that's just not as much money as it seems to be at this uh, at this point in life i would just stay home and take care of the baby mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because that's just supplemental income but when she grows up Slash, if I didn't have a baby, I would probably still work, but doing something maybe less money, more enjoyable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. More um, not doesn't feel like work kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe just sit here and do this all day. That's it? So you'd work and sit here and podcast? No, I, would, I wouldn't work. I would oh. just sit here and make content. That's it? Maybe. I mean, are we talk just like a day-to-day? -day? I would do a lot of things, but if you're asking, like, what would my new grind be? No, no, yeah, just, like, what would be, like, your, like, your new, like, my thoughts were, like, I'd definitely, it'd be a lot easier to, like, one, like, get healthier, right? Yeah. I think that'd be a lot easier to do, just more time for exercising and all that good stuff and yeah, eating, well, that's, eating right yeah, that, and... That's an hour a day. Um, I'm I'm high as a kite if I think this is an hour a day. I definitely travel more. Yeah. Um, I probably. I guess I'm not fully understanding the question. Hang with family more, like just like stuff that 
it, the biggest part of the question to me is like you don't have to work, meaning you're doing something yes. for profit's sake where this is just what would you do with life when you didn't have to worry about your income? Like, you know, would you pick up new hobbies? Would you learn or have tutors or go back to school or travel or pick up, you know, I'm going to garden more. Or I'm going to, you know, yeah. get better at golfing so or. So, but that's, that's what I'm saying though, is that's, that's not enough money to be like, all I'm going to do is travel because I still have bills to pay. I still have mortgage to pay, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, all this. Other. So it's not like I'm just going to travel around the world. I would. But you, I definitely could. You, you could. Yeah. Like maybe just like once a month be like, hey, David, let's go to uh, Madrid. And then the next month is like, hey, David, let's go to uh, Tokyo. Hey, David, let's go do a family run. Let's go see dad in New York and parents in Maryland and friends in Carolina or Tennessee or California, wherever they are. Who cares? Let's just go. But knowing, knowing you and me, we'd, we'd have to stop there. We'd be out of money. <laughs> <'Cause> Tokyo, <we'd> <laughs> Madrid, and go see dad. That's it. <laughs> no, I'm saying because you get that 150 every, oh, no, a year. Yeah. year right mm, yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm saying it's not it's not like a, a super significant right, well, amount of money we're flying economy <laughs> okay staying at yeah. motel sixes <laughs> we're keeping our job for five years we're dumping all that supplemental income in tesla and maybe in five years we can go to tokyo every day uh, mm. <laughs> that sounds miserable <laughs> well what did what did reddit say uh let's see what did reddit say they said um Cook, draw, play video games, read comics, watch movies, travel, pick up new hobbies, exercise, give more time, love, and attention to my wife and pets, uh, uh, read, spend okay. time with family, um, more vacations, relax, uh, find tutors who can help me learn new skills and languages and music. Excuse me. Um, so that one person said read and spend more time with family. Mm-hmm. How many hours a week are they working? And I'll tell you what. Sometimes you like got time to read. Wanna, if that's all you want to do. <laughs> it could be a fucking audio book yeah. at work. Uh -huh. uh, this guy said video games mostly, but probably get a personal trainer in the meantime, too. <laughs> so that's pretty good. Um, my wife does this. I am the income of about 250000 a year. She loves it most days. But man, 24-7 young kid care is some exhausting shit. I think we all aspire to be perfect parents, but some days are just counting the hours to bedtime. My wife feels the same. Likewise. Um, this guy said, I probably get I a job. <laughs> I wake up and I'm like, I can't wait to go to bed. Well, here's a good one. This is what you said. I'd still work, but it'd be something meaningful. Uh, volunteer, uh, 150 isn't enough to fund a family of four and still save for retirement in college. That's what I'm saying. Well, I ain't got family of four, so I'm Gucci. I'm going to Tokyo. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Christopher Sunlight. Uh, let's see. Uh, travel, uh, spoil my niece and nephew. A lot of golf. My man. Maybe I'd finally stop sucking. Uh, I gotta be honest. The, f the fact that you haven't said jerking off or meth once is <laughs> extremely surprising. Oh, there we go. Meth. <laughs> Drugs. Finally, an honest person. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Okay. It's, it's uh, very, yeah. Lot, mostly travel is the biggest, I think. Um, i trying to find one that's which is not like that's kind of funny. Let's see. Like, buy land, buy building, build buildings, get another job. Build buildings? Here you go. Step one, buy a puppet that looks like me. Step two, clone a willy of my dong. Step three, OnlyFans content creator slash collaborator with the badass dong-packed puppet. Step four, donate the money made to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> the badass dong-packed puppet. Huh. Badass dong packed puppet. Say that ten times fast. That's badass funny. dong packed puppet. Badass. Uh, nope. Can't do it. I can't even say fucking thermopoly right, and you can't even say thermoregulated. So I don't think 
either of us have any business trying to say that. All right, well, this week on my Ask Reddit, I have what is the harshest insult you've ever heard? And you asked me this pre-podcast, just a little bit of disclaimer, and I immediately thought of one right off the bat. Which was? Which was, uh, <laughs> which was Liquid Hot Fire saying, psych, that's the wrong number. <laughs> You want to elaborate? Mm? You what? come on, mm? come on! You've never. If this is a movie, you you know no no no, no. way better than this is homeboy in the glasses who's like, um, but I'm not a rapper. And then he'd always like jump back into his boys and they'd catch him because they're like oh with his comebacks. Oh, uh, that's the meme guy. Uh huh. So they say, "Here's my number. I wrote it on a piece of paper," and he hands it to him, and he goes, "Psych." That's the wrong number. Oh, and everyone jumps back and freaks out. And, okay. I don't know. That was the first. That was that. That was the first the thing. The harshest that or is that the most iconic? Uh, iconic. I couldn't think of okay. harshest. I really couldn't. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that I have any either. Uh, maybe as I'm reading these, they'll. Yeah, well. Spark some. Read me a couple. Whatever. What you got? Yeah, they're, uh, <laughs> they're kind of rough, man. Okay. So I hope so. The first one is guy said, I dropped a bucket of paint at one of my first jobs. A man that worked there for years turned to me and said, good one, dick fingers. You fuck everything you touch. (laughs) Definitely using that. (laughs) Dick fingers. Okay. (laughs) Yeah. A Jamaican sheet rocker I used to work with said, Usually they throw out the placenta and keep the baby, but I see in your case they did the opposite. Damn, that's harsh. <laughs> Damn. Uh, the next one is, I envy people who don't know you. Ooh. <laughs> Damn, I'm gonna need some 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 cold packs. It's getting it's getting yeah. hot in here. Woo. Next one says, your learning curve is a circle. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's solid. Like, how do you respond to that? <laughs> I think you just keep going right round, baby, uh-huh, right uh-huh. round. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's rough. Oof. The next one is, before I had braces, my fifth grade teacher told me I looked like I could eat corn off the cob through a chain link fence. <laughs> teacher said that? Oh, my a God. A fifth grade teacher. Like, how do you take that as a kid? There's no way you're growing up normal. Like, uh, this is at that point, to- you're like, huh. Also had to be somewhere out there, like middle of Kansas or something, Nebraska, yeah, somewhere with a lot Nebraska, of corn, and they're yeah, just like, "Yeah, dude, you could eat corn through it." What do you say? <laughs> <laughs> My teacher told me I looked like I could eat corn off the cob through a chain link fence. Oof, that sounds like a shankle line. Damn, girl, that ass looked like it could suck a. I don't know. I don't want to get us canceled. Okay. <laughs> uh, this one says probably not the most brutal. But I liked it a lot. I remember some comments in Reddit before where a guy said it to another dude, something along the lines of, I fucked your mom last night. And the dude replied with, so your disappointment to both our mothers. Damn. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Huh. That's rough. Gonna need some ice for that burn. God damn. This one says, I told my wife jokingly, you're not the dumbest bitch who ever lived, but you better hope she doesn't die. And without missing a beat, my wife said, don't worry, I'd remarry. <laughs> She's thought about this before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Brutal. This one, sa- this one says, I should have let you dribble down my leg. Thanks, Dad. Oh, all right. That just caught up to me. Rough. Yeah. <laughs> That's rough. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> this, this one says, 40 more IQ points and you'd be a moron. <laughs> okay, yeah. I ain't mad at it. Yeah, it's all right. This one says, your wife must have the cleanest vagina in the state because you're the biggest douche I've ever met. <laughs> That's great. I love that. And the last one is, that gamer girl that told a dude getting on her 
I'm going to fuck your dad and get pregnant so I can give him a son that he'll love. Because guess what? Nobody loves the esports kids. I fuck you, esports kids! I thought I could die! I don't know if I texted the right Sam. <laughs> How many Sams do you know? Well, I just I typed in Sam on my watch and I sent it. And then I, on my laptop, it doesn't show me messages that aren't iPhone messages, but it shows up as an iPhone message. <laughs> so I, I don't know. It might be a different Sam, but I think that's him. It's got to be him. Um, unless, he got an, unless he got an iPhone. It, it doesn't say his full name? No. I don't know any other Sams either, so it's got to uh, be him. 